is Jeremy Fisherman, and I'm here with Leonard Marshall, Super Bowl champion for the New York Giants. Thanks for being here, Leonard. You're welcome, Jeremy. My first question I have for you is how you got into playing football. What made you start? Well, as a, uh, a young adolescent growing up in uh, Louisiana, I wanted to find um, a playing ground that I could more or less function and, and mature into as a boy. I, I watched a lot of athletes in my area uh, get opportunities to go to college. I'm one of seven kids, so football was a way for me to get to college more than uh, a way for me to be a professional. I mean, the dream of playing pro football was always there, but coming from where I come from in this country, uh, I had never envisioned that the game would take me as far as it has. Was there an athlete while you were growing up who inspired you? Oh, absolutely. There were several athletes that inspired me. I think one of the greatest, uh, obviously, is Muhammad Ali, but um, if you want to talk about football players, um, I would talk about my cousin, Ernie Ladd, and my other cousin, Warren Wells, uh, as both were professional athletes. Um, and, of course, one of my homeboys, uh, Wallace Francis, who ended up playing for the Buffalo Bills most of his career with O.J. Simpson. So uh, there was a lot of good, positive influence coming from where I come from. Uh, being a child of segregation uh, in the 1960s uh, was quite the challenge because uh, blacks and whites couldn't use the same bathroom, blacks and whites couldn't play together, blacks and whites could never, couldn't even go to school together until 1967, 68, when they passed the, uh, or they desegregated schools. And, and, and that schools now can be intertwined and intermixed and intermingled. So uh, I was lucky and fortunate for that to happen. And um, I took advantage of it. Now, while you were playing, were there any athletes who inspired you to keep doing what you were doing? Uh, I think my greatest inspiration came from uh, my parents. You know, um, what I wanted to do with my life and how I wanted to impact theirs. And um, I did a pretty good job of that, I think. Um, put three of my siblings through college, bought my parents a couple of homes, a couple of automobiles, did some really good things for them that they couldn't do for themselves. So, you know, that, that's the gift, I guess, that you get from up there. And utilizing the gift to now do something bigger and better to help your family was quite the, quite the thing for me. And it always kept me inspired. Love that. Can you talk about what it was like playing under Bill Parcells? Playing under Bill Parcells was fun. You know, um, you got a guy who pretty much grew up in Hackensack, Oradell, New Jersey. Um, street guy who just so happened to get a job coaching a professional football team uh, late in his 40-year uh, lifetime. And uh, he took advantage of it. I mean, uh, you know, he's, he, he knew what what was ahead of him and uh, kudos to him and the relationship that we share today is uh, still quite special a lot different than when I was a rookie in the NFL but uh, uh, now that he's a much older man and I'm a much older man uh, the mutual respect for both what we did what he did and what we did together is uh, unbelievable now you got to play on one of the biggest stages in sports the Super Bowl how did you handle the pressure that came along with that? Oh, I love the pressure. I think the thing I loved about pro football was the challenge of walking out on the visiting team's field and kicking their ass. Uh, so uh, I, I love the game of pro football. Pro football uh, shaped my life, gave me everything I have, and still continues to give me everything I am today. So um, it's unfortunate that you know there's a lot of uh, other things that come into play with pro football. But yet, if, once you get past some of that and the bureaucracy of it, I think uh, you look back and say, you know, wow, you know, life has been uh, quite fulfilling. One of your biggest moments in your career came in the NFC Championship game against the 49ers after you put that hit on Joe Montana. Can you talk about the hit, and do you regret it at all? I don't regret uh, anything I did in my career. I think the thing I remember about the Montana play, if you're a coach watching the play and you're a coach watching the way that we play defense, uh, you will admire what, what happened because, you know, it's a third down situation. It's third and long. You know, I, we knew what they were going to do. They knew what we were going to do. 
Uh, we lined up Lawrence Taylor left, lined up me right, two best pass rushers on the edge, two guys up the gut. And I told Lawrence, before we broke the huddle, I'll see you at the quarterback. It just so happened that I slip, I fall, a guy dives at my feet, takes my feet from underneath me, but I continue to crawl and scratch and do whatever I could to get there to try to make a football play. Um, I was playing for something bigger than just winning a game. I was playing to go to, go to the Super Bowl again, which is something that I wanted to do. Uh, I had held out a training camp the whole offseason. Um, didn't even think I was going to be a giant. I was hoping to be a New Orleans Saints because I wanted to go play with Pat Swilling and Ricky Jackson, but um, it just so happened it turned out I returned to New York and made the best of it. We beat a great football team in the Buffalo Bills. There's no doubt. I mean, a team that scored 91 points in two weeks against two of the best teams in football uh, in the AFC West. AFC West and AFC East. So um, it's the kind of football play that if you're a coach watching the play and you want to use a teaching moment, you use this football play to teach kids that the ground is hot, you never give up on a football play, and the play doesn't stop until the whistle blows. That's what I did. What was your reaction after Norwood missed the kick and you guys won the Super Bowl? Oh, I was happy as ever. I mean, you know, shit, I'm going to buy my dad a new Cadillac. The first thing I thought about. Last thing I have is talk about Lawrence Taylor. You mentioned him just before. What was it like playing alongside of him for as long as you did? Probably the greatest pure athlete, pure athlete I've ever been around. I think equally yoked, he and Carl Banks are probably the most – Two of the most athletic guys I ever played football with. But Lawrence had something special. Lawrence had a, he had this thing in him that just, you know, you, you can't coach it, you can't teach it, you can't, you don't understand it. Um, hell, I didn't, I convinced him to lift weights in 1985, 86. I wonder what would have happened if he would have lifted weights before that or if he would have continued to do it because the, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, I don't know what would have happened, but the guy was just an exceptional player. When they talk about, he might not be recognized as the best football player ever, but I guarantee you, he will go. He should be put into the category as, if not the best defensive player in football, then who is the best defensive player in football? Because I watch the greatness. I watch. I watch in practice. We dressed opposite each other every day in practice, every game day. And uh, he's my goat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.